for as long as I can remember, I've been a fan of Winnie the Pooh, his friends, and the adventures that they have in the Hundred Acre Wood. When I was a kid, every single Saturday morning, I would watch reruns of the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh on Disney's One Saturday Morning. Y'all know that tune, I think, maybe. Anyways, I also had uh, the Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2 on VHS, which I would watch frequently. Yes, I said VHS because I'm just showing my age apparently, but continuing on. I've also seen the original musical uh, from 1977, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, and just so many Winnie the Pooh movies and Winnie the Pooh shows. Now, while it has been just far too many years since I've seen any of them, I still enjoy them and I love them because for me, Winnie the Pooh, he's just, and everything that goes with it is like a big and warm, comforting hug. So why has it taken until my adulthood for me to finally be able to read, not be able to read, just to finally read the books that the, all of this is based off of? I honestly have no idea, so I'm just glad that I did it. And here we are, and okay. <laughs> now, while I have not watched the 1977 musical in a very long time, I do want to point out that that musical, it is so faithful to the original books from the pacing, some of the dialogue, the tone of it, so much of it is lifted directly from the pages and just brought to life outside of the books and our imagination. Speaking of imagination, I've really got to credit the author A.A. A. Milne for being able to write such simple stories that I still have an easy time imagining and picturing in my head. Like, I think he's done a better job than some adult books that I've read. So kudos to you, my good sir. Now do the adorable illustrations by Ernest H. Shepard help with all of this? Yes, yes it does, but my point still stands. Now the first book is Winnie the Pooh, and since The House at Pooh Corner is a continuation of all of the adventures, I'm gonna be talking about these two as one whole unit. Cool. These two books, they are just so gosh dang sweet and endearing. I smiled so much when I was reading these books. I'm, the humor is silly, it's fun, and it even has its moments of just being clever. And just to illustrate the humor, I do want to read a small section from The House at Pooh Corner, and it's a quote from our gloomy good sir Eeyore. That's right, you'll like Owl. He flew past a day or two ago and noticed me. He didn't actually say anything, mind you, but he knew it was me. Very friendly of him, I thought. Encouraging. I love it! Oh my gosh! It's so simple. I have a range of what I find humorous, okay? And that was just... Each character in these books, they have such a distinct personality, which... I mean, that's exactly what you want in good storytelling. And these stories have it, so I'm just super pleased about that particular fact. <laughs> they each have their strengths and weaknesses, each character, they're nuanced. Now a few of the characters, like Eeyore for example, he does have a few moments of being a little bit mean or mean-spirited. <laughs> there was a moment, I don't remember exactly where, but there was a specific moment where essentially Eeyore said to Pooh Bear's face that he has very little brain, which... My gloomy dude, that's not a particularly nice thing to say to anyone, but you know, especially to your friend. Shush. Now when it comes to the characters, Piglet has pretty much always been my favorite. Oh, and fun fact, when I was in college, I got to play Piglet in a children's play. That was a lot of fun. And yeah, anyways, so yeah. However, after reading these books, it's just given me such a new appreciation of the titular, titular character, Winnie the Pooh. He is such a silly old bear who has admitted to having very little brain, but he owns that fact and he embraces it. And on that line of something, there is also a moment from a house 
the, excuse me, the house at Pooh Corner that has Winnie the Pooh and Piglet talking about brains with a capital B that I just want to read to you. Rabbit's clever, said Pooh thoughtfully. Yes, said Piglet. Rabbit's clever. He has a brain. Yes, said Piglet. Rabbit has a brain. There was a long silence. I suppose, said Pooh, that that's why he never understands anything. Okay, there's that humor again, okay? Ah! <laughs> now, to be fair, though, to our sweet Pooh Bear, he does genuinely have a few moments of genuine wisdom and smart, so... There. I also just really admire how zen Pooh Bear can be about things and, you know, side note, ooh, actually, let me grab it. Visuals! If you've ever been curious about pretty much the psyche of Winnie the Pooh, then sometime last year I did a review of, it's a nonfiction book called The Tao of Pooh by Benjamin Hoff. Uh, you can click up here or I will leave a link in the description box below. And it pretty much explores just how chill <laughs> Winnie the Pooh can be. I found it a fun and interesting read. So yeah, just, uh, <clears throat> that was a weird thing that I did with my voice. Check it out if you want to. Okay, since I have not watched any of these shows or movies in such a long time, I feel like I had forgotten the fact that Winnie the Pooh, he just really loves to come up with poems and songs, um, which just that simple little nugget right there, I really enjoyed that. Plus, okay, I read these wonderful books in two days, so it all just kind of blurs together. But I do remember there is a point in one of the books that Pooh Bear, he explains that when it comes to the poems and the songs, he does not find the poems or songs. They come to him. I don't know how else to explain it, but that just sounds very hippie-esque. No complaints, no judgment. It's just an observation. Now, really the last biggest point that I want to touch on with these books is the length of these stories. They are the perfect length for bedtime stories for kids or even adults like moi who, you know, just want to enjoy an adventure at night and just be at peace and have some happiness every night, okay? It's fine. If it is not obvious, these two books, let's bring them back up, are a big recommendation for me. They are so comforting, they are sweet, and they made me feel honestly at peace while I was reading them. So mm, I will for sure be reading these to my future child. Now, it always feels a bit weird to rate a children's book, but uh, I gave both of these five stars and oh yeah, so it's been approximately an eternity, but I finally signed up for Goodreads. You know, the thing that all booktubers do, but I finally did it. So there we go. Links down below if you just want to check that out. Yep. Okay. Now, before I sign off, I have two questions for all of you. One, who else remembers Disney's One Saturday Morning? God, so many memories. I miss that stuff. Such simple times. Question number two, who is your favorite character in Winnie the Pooh? And that is it. I hope you all enjoyed, I think, this rather wholesome review. Thank you all so much for watching. Please take care, everyone, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!